I really dislike seeing how pervasive the weapon meta circle jerk is within the more toxic depths of the ultra kill community. More specifically, I find it disheartening to watch so many people downplay the arsenal choices of others simply because they think someone could be using a quote unquote weapon that does the job better. Oh my god, this jar of mayonnaise is using the default pisser. Cripes, what imbeciles using the screwdriver instead of the electric rail cannon? Crikey, this bugger seriously uses the old maxi. Whoa, okay there guys, Jesus. One way or another, I personally feel that unironically calling an ultra kill weapon bad is pretty unproductive, and more importantly, it defeats the whole purpose of playing a game like this in the first place. If there was just one thing that I wanted people to take away from Ultra Kill, it would be the game's design philosophy. See, Ultra Kill genuinely tries its very best to cater to all sorts of individuals, and as a result, it is one of the best examples of an FPS that allows for a wide variety of playstyles and weapon choices whilst ensuring that one can be just as fun and effective as the other once mastery is achieved. In other words, experimenting with everything in order to pick and choose the stuff that suits your own preferences rather than the majority's is what makes Ultra Kill so good. At least for me, this is one of the most crucial factors which separates Ultra Kill from its predecessors, such as Doom Eternal. For instance, the Microwave Beam is objectively a pretty underwhelming weapon mod, even when compared to the Plasma Rifle's Heat Blast. And I can say this with complete confidence, because not only do I enjoy using it over the Heat Blast, the devs themselves had to specifically add an enemy that's resistant to every other form of damage aside from this one in order to at least force players into using it once every blue moon. On the other hand, let's have a quick look at one of the basic enemies of Ultra Kill. Here we have a malicious face. It's not particularly notable at first glance, yet you'll quickly find out that it takes absolutely no damage from explosions. So I guess this, 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 and even this is useless against it now. Or is it? Okay, well, in that case, it wouldn't be wrong for a newer player to extrapolate the fact that Ultra Kill's weapons are purposefully designed to be flexible and therefore equally deserving of utilization in the game. Of course, this also means that what you find enjoyable and powerful may not be the case according to another person's criteria. However, some people are seemingly incapable of understanding this idea, and that's what ticks me off. Yeah, maybe you personally found the screwdriver disappointing, but don't hop into a YouTube comment section or Reddit thread to immediately deny someone else the chance of incorporating the screwdriver into their own kit. Or worse yet, please don't pester people that are already having fun with the screwdriver by telling them how much better the other rail cannons are. Now, I won't deny that I myself will actively recommend all kinds of things in Ultra Kill, but I always do so with the intent of introducing people to something they could consider cool, unique, or engaging, whether it's meta or not. Furthermore, I will never go out of my way to bully someone for using any kind of weapon, nor will I demean their arsenal just for the sake of propping up my own on a pedestal. At the end of the day, what is the point of homogenizing everyone's gameplay in a single player game of all things? Instead, let's all try our best to encourage players into finding their own groove, because that's what the slick, skill-expressive gameplay of Ultra Kill is all about, right?